Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the ever so grand classic collection, and thanks to a lot of the new cards from the classic collection, we could upgrade and update some current and existing decks to make them even more powerful than they were before. So the deck that I'm going to be covering today is going to be the Never Dying Imperial Jamon deck. That's right, Imperial Jermon is back and better than ever thanks to a whole line of cards that are directly supporting him so that way he could be as powerful as he possibly can be with a new Imperial Jermon to help support the old Imperial Jermons in some new and exciting ways, opening the doors to multiple different styles of decks that can be built and more possibilities that uh, Imperial Jermon can do. So for this video, I'm only going to be covering the blue side because I think the blue side is still just better than the green side, even though the green side is getting more viable. So without further ado, onto the deck profile. Starting off with the Digitama, I'm going to be running four copies of Demi Vimon. So this is the BT-03 version of Demi Vimon, and this Demi Vimon is still really good for the deck because it's acting as the card draw engine for the deck, or at least one of them. So what this card is doing more specifically is it has the nice inheritable ability of when attacking once per turn. If this Digimon has jamming, then you get to draw one card. So we do want to try to swing with our jamming Digimon because, well, it's jamming, it makes our attacks onto the opponent's security relatively safe. So every time we're going to be doing that, Demi Vimon here is going to be rewarding us with drawing a card, upping the overall consistency of the deck, allowing us to not only try to dig for our pieces, but be able to respond to what the opponent is doing. And then as far as the fifth Digitama of the deck goes, it could really be anything you feel like you want it to be, but I'm going to be using one copy of Demi Vimon from the All Four Starter deck, just because I do value having some form of DP boost in the deck in case we do need to aggress it in a slightly different way. So we're not always going to have the jamming ability to aggress onto the opponent's security, and sometimes we do just need to attack into the opponent's Digimon, so having the DP boost is good at accomplishing both of those tasks, and there's no better DP boosting Digitama that Blue has access to than Demi Vimon here, because he states that during your turn, while you have eight or more cards in your hand, which is not very hard for Blue to do at all, this Digimon gets plus a thousand DP, so that way we can make our Digimon a little bit stronger than they normally would be. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running four copies of Vimon. So this is the BT-02 Vimon, and this Vimon is another card draw engine for the deck. So what this card is doing is he gives the nice inheritable ability where during your turn, once per turn, when this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, then we get to draw one card. So this is just another really good card to allow us to try to draw cards because Imperial Jamon is focused on multi-attacking as well as jamming, making it this card a really good card to be using to, again, try to draw some cards to be able to up the overall consistency of the deck and to be able to find cards that we not only need in order to make our plays as powerful as possible, but to be able to respond to what the opponent is doing as well. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Madoki Betamon. So, Madoki Betamon is, for all intents and purposes, a flex spot of the deck. This could really be any card you feel like you want it to be, but I do like what Madoki Betamon is doing because it is an anti-meta card. So what this card is doing is it has the nice powerful ability native to it, where during all turns, the opponent can't gain memory except by tamer effects. So locking out the opponent from utilizing their memory and manipulating shenanigans just makes their plays less and less efficient, and if they're unable to respond to Madoki Betamon, it could even deter or turn off the opponent's ability to make certain lines of play, and that's just really, really powerful and important for the deck, trying to slow the opponent down as much as we possibly can. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Vimon. So this is the classic collection version of Vimon, and this Vimon is doing something very, very similar to the BT-02 Vimon, where it has a nice uh, inheritable ability during your turn, once per turn. When this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, then we get to gain one memory. So it's basically doing almost the exact same thing, except we're gaining the memory instead of drawing the card, and that could be pretty good because it can make it not only our place more efficient and powerful, but uh, we could use this to try to set up uh, some various other lines of play because it's making our plays more efficient than they normally would be. And then the last uh, rookie of the deck is going to be four copies of Vimon. So this is it, the uh, All Force Starter Deck version of Vimon, and we really aren't going to be using its top ability at all to try to warp into an All Force, although you could if you really wanted to. It's just uh, 
something we don't necessarily need to do, but uh, what we're using this card for is for its inheritable ability, where when attacking, not limited to once per turn, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, then we get to draw one card, acting as, well, some more consistency and draw power for the deck, because uh, we're going to be trying to uh, go up into our higher stages as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can, and this card helps us draw some cards to be as consistent as we possibly can be. Next, on to the champions, I'm going to be running three copies of Silamon. So Silamon is going to be the deck's dedicated blocker, so if you wanted to run Grizzlymon instead, by all means do so. It's not like it's mattering that much, uh, you get different utility for the different cards. So I am going to be taking the DP reduction uh, of uh, running a less efficient blocker as a whole, because the trade-off uh, for running Silamon over Grizzlymon is the fact that it evos for one, and I do want and value that tempo efficiency, in case I don't even need to utilize it as a blocker at all. So uh, that's why I'm choosing to prefer running Seelamon, but this is just the deck's dedicated blocker slot. Next, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of XVmon. So this is the brand new classic collection version of XVmon, and this card is really good for the deck because, well, it's synergizing with everything Imperial Jamon is doing. So what this card is doing more specifically is he does have the ability to digivolve off of blue or green, so this is what's allowing you to actually utilize a green low end if you really wanted to, and on top of that he naturally has the jamming ability, so we have a really good uh, mid-game jammer to swing with, it. so that way we could get some card draws off of this card paired up with Demi Vimon. And then on top of all of that, this card has a really powerful inheritable ability where during your turn, while this Digimon has Imperial Jermon in its name or free in its trait, then it gains the jamming ability. So this is really, really powerful because for the Imperial Jermons that don't have jamming, this is basically going to give them jamming so that way, well, they have jamming to make their attacks onto the opponent's security as safe as they possibly can make them. And then the last uh, champion of the deck is going to be four copies of Stingmon. So Stingmon from the Classic Collection is doing some very similar things to uh, XVmon from the Classic Collection, where it's a green Digimon and can digivolve off of a green and blue, and on top of that, uh, this card does natively have the piercing ability. I think this is a little bit less useful than uh, just natively having jamming, but it's still nice to have uh, when we need it and against certain matchups. And then on top of that, it gives the inheritable ability of piercing to our Imperial Jermon or our Digimon with free in its traits. So basically just our Imperial Jermons in this deck. And that's really important and powerful because it could deter or stop the opponent from wanting to block because we're going to be attacking with potentially a piercing jammer. So that's what's making uh, Stingmon so good is just the added extra aggression that it's offering to our Imperial Jermons. Next, on to the ultimates, I'm going to be running four copies of Pyildramon. So this is uh, the uh, BT-03 version of Pyildramon, and this Pyildramon is still really good for the deck because, well, he's just still one of the best inheritable abilities Imperial Jermon could be playing around with. So what this card is doing is he natively has the jamming ability, again, for Demi Vimon, so that way when we swing with this card, we're going to be drawing a card to try to find our other cards, which is really good. He could digivolve off of blue and green, so running Stingmon isn't really that big of a deal, because uh, we're not losing any uh, tempo in our color digivolutions. And then on top of that, his inheritable ability states that when attacking once per turn, if this Digimon has Imperial Jermon in its name, then we get to unsuspend it, allowing him to multi-attack. So this is really powerful and really important of a card because the main playline that we want to do with this and the BT-03 Imperial Jermon is swing. Then we're going to digivolve it into uh, Imperial Jermon, unsuspend the card, trigger our unsuspend synergies, then swing again, then trigger this card's inheritable ability to unsuspend our Imperial Jermon to swing again. So that way we could equate to three attacks with the uh, BT-03 Imperial Jermon. But it's really good for the new Imperial Jermon, which I'll get to in just a moment as well, just because it's utilizing the fact that it's interacting with Imperial Jermons by name. And then the last uh, ultimate of the deck is going to be four copies of Pyil Jermon. So this is the classic collection version of Pyil Jermon, and it's doing some very similar things to uh, how we want to use this card compared to uh, the BT-03 version of Pyil Jermon. I think between the two, uh, they're just uh, the best inheritables that we have and ways to interact with our Imperial Jermons, but I digress, and this card is still really good because of all of the different things we could do with them. 
So he just has the main ability where we could digivolve him off of blue or green, similar to the other one. So again, no loss in swapping or changing up the colors. And then on top of that, he has a nice one digivolving ability native to him, where if a Digimon with a free in its trait is in this Digimon's Digivolution source, then we get to unsuspend this Digimon. So this is mainly interacting with the jamming of X Vmon, where the whole idea is we could swing with jamming X Vmon, then digivolve him into Pyildramon. So that way, Pyildramon will unsuspend himself, triggering any of our unsuspend synergies relatively early. So that's really, really good. And then we could use uh, Pyildramon to swing and digivolve into uh, a uh, Imperial Jamon if we really wanted to. So it's a, just another really good card to try to form some good combo plays to be as aggressive as we possibly can. And then its Inheritables ability states that during your turn, while this Digimon has Imperial Jamon in its name, then it can't be blocked. So we could use this card to make our Imperial Germans unblockable, so that way he just gets safe and free swings at the opponent's security, allowing us to, well, freely aggress onto the opponent, trying to close out the game as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can, making this uh, Pyel German just that good of a card to run. Next up, onto the Megas, I'm going to be running two copies of Imperial German Dragon Mode. So I've been going back and forth on which one I want to run as the main and which one I want to run as the support. So for this deck profile, I'm just going to be running this version as the support because it's still really good, but uh, there are just more play lines that the other one has based on how I built the deck. So what this card is doing is it has the nice uh, ability where it could reduce its own evolution cost by two when it's digivolving on top of a Pyildramon or Dino Beamon. So we're only running Pyildramons, so that means uh, we're always going to be able to digivolve this uh, for three in our battle area, allowing us to have some really good combo plays because he natively has the jamming ability on top of the fact that he interacts with our jamming Digimon where he has this nice when digivolving ability, we get to unsuspend all of our Digimon with jamming. So this is really powerful because we do have lots of other jammers in the deck for this ability to be interacting with, and at worst it's interacting with itself, so that way we could try to swing with our level 5 Digivolve into this Imperial German, so that way he's going to unsuspend himself, so that way this Imperial German can swing again. So that's like the whole intended playline on how this card wants to be played, and the fact that we do have other jamming cards to interact with this just makes it really, really powerful. But as far as the main Imperial German, I'm going to be running up four copies of the Classic Collection Imperial German because I think it just does have a little bit more flexible utility. So uh, what this card is doing is it naturally digivolves for three off of uh, blue or green, and then it only has 11,000 DP versus a 12,000 DP base, but uh, he could shore up that weakness uh, because he has this nice ability where during your turn, for each color in this Digimon's Digivolution source, it gets plus 1,000 DP. So at worst, with only one color being blue, this card's going to be a uh, 12,000, which is on par with the other Imperial German, and then uh, at best it's going to be 13, just because uh, we could potentially add green cards into the deck to make him a little bit stronger. Right now, I'm only running Stingmon as the only green Digimon, but it doesn't necessarily matter that much in the long run based on how we want to use the card, because we do just have different ways of utilizing the card based on what stacks we see. So what this card's uh, other ability is doing is it's a uh, when digivolving ability, where if a Digimon with free in its trait uh, digivolves it into this card, then we get to unsuspend uh, this uh, Digimon and suspend one of the opponent's Digimon. So this is what's making this card really powerful and have lots of high utility, because uh, we could use him to either A, multi-attack just like the other Imperial Digimon, and if we give him jamming, then it's basically almost the exact same thing. And then B, if we need him to aggress onto the opponent's Digimon, and we have the piercing ability attached to him, then we could use the piercing ability to attack into the opponent's Digimon, and try to make our Digimon as powerful as he possibly can be, because he is DP boosting himself. So uh, this card is just adding lots of additional utility to what the deck was doing before, and I think as a result, that extra utility on how we could play him based on our different stacks is just making him a little bit better than the other Imperial. Germans. And then because we are a more aggressive style of deck that's focusing around uh, multi-attackings, as a, a result, I'm only going to be running two copies of Omnimon as the last Mega and only level 7 in the deck. So what we're trying to utilize this card for is a game finisher, where he has this nice uh, when digivolving ability of unsuspending himself, so that way he can make an additional tech, and if we have uh, him a uh, Digivolve and the memory goes past onto the opponent's side, then he has the Blitz ability to attack it 
So uh, those two abilities pair very nicely with each other. And if we are unable to finish off the, the opponent, then he's just a really annoying card for the opponent to try to deal with because of his all turns ability, giving him some form of protection, where if this uh, Digimon would be deleted, return to the hand or deck, then we get to prevent uh, that card from leaving play by removing one level six uh, Digimon from its uh, Digivolution source. So this is just a pretty good card to be using overall, but the ideal way we want to use them is as a game finisher, where we're trying to aggress and break the opponent's security as quickly and efficiently as we can with our Impel Dramons, and then Digivolve into Blitz Omni for game. Next, on to the options, I'm going to be running four copies of Ice Wall. So Ice Wall is actually a really good card. It doesn't seem like it is on the surface, but it's a little bit better than what people might give it credit for. So what this card is doing is it's a one cost blue option card with the main ability where the opponent's Digimon gain when attacking lose two memory until the end of the turn. So for basically one memory, you get to turn off the opponent's uh, ability to basically attack because they're not going to have that much memory to work with, or even if they do have that much memory to work with, it still limits the amount of attacks that they can make, just making it a very annoying card for the opponent to deal with because, well, we're an aggro style deck trying to aggress onto the opponent and we have a cheap efficient way of turning off the opponent's ability to, well, aggro back into us, or at least limit the amount of aggro they can do. And then this card has the ever so powerful security ability of gaining two memory, so it's basically like a hammer spark in security, being a really good security card as well. And then the last option of the deck is going to be uh, two copies of Blue Memory Boost. So this could be Hammer Spark if you wanted to. This could be a removal card if you really wanted to. I just feel like for what the deck is trying to do, Blue Memory Boost is just fine because uh, Blue Memory Boost is a really solid consistency card where we're using it to try to dig out uh, of our top four cards, one blue Digimon among them and add it into our hand, which is just good because the majority of our deck is blue outside of a couple of exceptions and then on top of that it has the secondary main ability where it has delay so after you use this card it goes into the battle era so that way we could use the delay ability at a later turn to gain two memory to make some very powerful follow-up plays happen when we need the additional memory to well form that push turn and then it has the security ability of putting itself into the battle area, so that way we could at worst use its delay ability to gain the two memory when we need it to make a good push turn. And lastly, onto the tamers, I'm only going to be running Davis as the last card and only tamer of the deck, because Davis is, well, the only tamer we really need. So what this card is doing is he's going to be the memory fixing tamer. So if our memory is ever less than three, he'll just hard set it to three. And he has a really good on play ability that adds to the deck's overall consistency. So his on play ability states that we get to reveal the top three cards of our deck and add one blue and one green Digimon among them into our hand and then the rest go to the bottom. So Davis could allow us to run a little bit more green cards if we really wanted to just because we do have the Dino B set to be interacting with. So if you wanted to run like a one or two of the new Dino Beamon, then that's perfectly fine. We could do that to allow Davis to be more consistent on grabbing us more possible cards if we wanted to, but at worst, it's still going to be grabbing at least a blue card and or a green card. So it's still a very powerful card to be using to try to dig out our pieces. Then as far as uh, some of the alternative cards that you could possibly run with the blue Imperial Jabon, there's just, well, a lot that you could do with it based on what you have access to and what you actually feel like utilizing. So as far as the fifth Digitama goes, uh, you could uh, consider running the BTO2 Demi Vimon. If you wanted to, you could also run Upamon. They're just more ways of drawing and gaining DP. And then you also could run the BTO3 Vmon just because he naturally has jamming, allowing him to be a really powerful card to aggress with early on, not only helping us draw cards, but deal damage if the opponent doesn't have a blocker to stop him. And the fact that he does interact with the BTO3 Imperial Jermon is still really good, so that way we have a jammer on every single level. Then if you want another anti-meta card, then we do have Siakumon to try to turn off the opponent from reducing their Digivolution costs. I don't think it's as powerful as uh, turning off the ability to gain memory, but it's still another anti-meta card to think about, limiting the opponent's actions potentially. Then we do have another really good DP booster on our rookie level in the form of starter deck Gabumon because his ability triggers during all turns with a easy condition to get plus 1000 DP. Then if you do want to try to just uh, run more consistency cards uh, for the deck, you could also consider running Dracomon because uh, he's going to be the digger for Dramons and all of our high-end Digimon have Dramon in their name, so this could grab any one of our level 5s and 6s. 
Then on our champions, if you want to run uh, some other tempo efficiency cards, we do have Gorillamon and Tobiomon to be playing with just because, well, they're tempo efficient cards, allowing us to uh, get into our higher stages as quickly as we possibly can. We do have an alternate XVmon in the deck if you want to try to aggress with your lower levels because his when digivolving ability to unsuspend uh, one of our lower level Digimon is really good on top of the fact that he's just an extra XVmon if you want to be playing around with him. And then we also have Lobomon to be interacting with as an alternate game finisher just because we still are running Davis. So if you want to just try to aggress with your Imperial Dramons and break all of their security, then hopefully they won't have enough uh, ability to stop you from digivolving on top of your Davis into Lobomon and swing for the game that way. It's just another really good alternate win condition. Then we have uh, Vidramon from the All Four Starter deck to add some extra control elements into the deck, trying to interact with the opponent's field because of his when attacking ability not limited to once per turn to try to bounce the opponent's uh, low level Digimon back to the hand. And then we also do have Quartermon to act as another alternate win condition slash threat because, well, he's a security Digimon with a powerful on play ability of drawing two cards. So there's just lots of different ways this card could be used, and this card could be absolutely brutal and devastating for the opponent to see on their turn. Then if we do want to dip a little bit into green, we could still play with the old Dino Beemon just because he does have two very powerful keywords that we're already trying to interact with. So he's just another good generic card to be considering. But I do think that the new Dino Beemon is a little bit better just because he does have more direct synergy with making our Imperial Dramons even more powerful than they were before. So uh, this uh, Dino Beemon uh, has the ability to uh, suspend the opponent's Digimon when we Digivolve into him, which is already pretty good. And then on top of that, uh, he also has uh, the ability to give our Imperial Dramon one memory when he deletes one of the opponent's Digimon and survives the battle. So he's interacting more with piercing, where the other one is trying to interact more with jamming. And then we could also consider running Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, the green secret rare, just because, well, we have easy access to use him, we could give him jamming, and he's still just a very good Imperial Dramon to be considered running. I do think he's just better with a green base than a blue base, but we still have access to him nonetheless, which is worth mentioning. Then as far as some other really good options that we could run, we could run uh, Forbidden Trident as a buff spell, so it's just trying to uh, not only boost our Digimon, but bounce the opponent's uh, low-level Digimon back to their hand. Then we have Howling Memory Boost to act as another Memory Boost card, and also to try to pick apart the opponent's Inheritables, so if we really wanted to try to stop the opponent from aggressing or defending with that Digimon, then we could also consider playing Sora and Joe to add some more... Uh, abilities to try to pick apart the opponent's inheritables to make Howling Memory Boost even better. Then if you really wanted to, you could also run DNA Digivolution Hearts United because you could also consider playing Ken in the deck because now we have easy access at piercing and Ken will reward us for piercing. On top of the fact that we do have lots of card draw and we are playing an XVmon and a Stingmon in the deck already, so it is a very... Uh, interesting card to set up, but when it is set up properly, it's a very powerful card when used correctly. Then we also could consider running Hammerspark because, well, it's Hammerspark, it's just one of the best blue options in the game. And we do have a plethora of different bounce spells or bounce effects for blue on our options. So we have Kokaitis Breath, V-Wing Blade, Rattlestar, there's just a lot of them to try to interact with the opponent's field, acting as also a really good security threat. And then we even have a Positron Laser to think about, just because Positron Laser is, well, another really good bounce spell that is interacting with the fact that we want to have and use both colors. And we even have Ken, as I mentioned, as an alternative tamer to think about uh, on top of Sora and Joe. So there's just lots of different tamer options that we have access to to try to make our Imperial Dramons and make our plays as powerful and efficient as we possibly can. So this is just my interpretation on what a blue-based Imperial Dramon deck is going to look like. Like I said before, there is a possible green base or green foundation for Imperial Dramon, but I still think blue is a little bit better just because it has lots of card draw and it could still hit the opponent relatively hard and relatively fast thanks to all of the new tools that keeping Imperial Dramon relatively, well, relevant in the current meta, and it doesn't look like the deck is going to be going away anytime soon. 
So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zunitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and uh, as always, uh, don't forget to, to like, uh, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.